So first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna prepare our water bucket and we're gonna pH it down. And uh, my lab assistant Cameron here is doing good safety practices with tying up her hair, wearing her goggles. And go ahead, Cam, let's adjust the pH. Give it a squirt in there all the way. Perfect. All right, the growing medium we're gonna use for our seeds is rock wool, which is essentially like rock cotton candy if you wanna think of it. Now these wools have a little hole in the center, which is where we're going to be embedding our seeds. So we like to use rock wool for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's incredibly lightweight. It is incredibly absorbent, so it's gonna hold a lot of water for its size. And because of its spun nature, it's gonna allow a lot of oxygen to hit the root zone once our seeds germinate. What my lab assistant is doing now is soaking the rock wools in our ph water. We wanna get them nice and uh, damp and ready for seeds. I want you to notice again, safety, she's wearing gloves. Uh, rock wool, almost like the pink insulation in your walls can get kind of fibrous and we don't want any of those getting stuck in our fingers. The seed varieties we are going to go with are one fruiting version, which are the green beans from our lab. We've got green onions, rosemary, dill, lavender, and basil for the herb garden. Our leafy greens are gonna include arugula, Boston lettuce, Swiss chard, and spinach. And we're gonna go with one tuber, the yam, for our potato buckets. And that is inclusive of our little uh, cuttings project here where we've got some tomatoes, green beans, and basils already started. All right, a lot of us is probably not really seen seeds before in terms of what we eat. So just to introduce you to the players in the leafy greens, we've got our lettuce seeds, arugula, Swiss chard, and we've got spinach. So for the bigger seeds, we're gonna be able to use our fingers. And for the smaller seeds, we are gonna use our wet toothpick method. Thanks, Cam. All right, so we're working with really tiny seeds here, right? And Cam is uh, currently planting basil. And notice how she's using her little toothpick trick to pick them up and then put them right into the rock wool. That's really great. So we're also gonna go now with green onion. We've got a little um, rosemary and dill. So. Cameron is just putting her spinach seeds in there and then raking the opening closed with her toothpick. Very nicely done. And we're gonna transfer it over into our seed tray. Now these don't fit because they're a little bit bigger, right? But that's okay. So while we're finishing up over here with some seeding, I do wanna point out that we are currently soaking our bean seeds. So any of these larger uh, seed coats need a little time in water before they're ready to be implanted. So I'm gonna give those about six hours in there before I move them into rock holes. So you might have asked before, why soak those beans? It's the same reason when we did our um, lima bean dissection, we soaked them first. Because what happens is you loosen up those seed coats and that is going to promote germination once we get them into the rock walls and in the proper environment. So soaking your bigger seeds definitely helps with those seed coats. And why not practice our letters and numbers? So we're gonna label our crops and we're gonna write down the date that we put them into the system so that we can track how long it takes for them to germinate. All right, this one is going to be yams. Yams, so what letter should we put on the top of our ticket? R. Yams. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Why? That's a lot better than R. Okay, go ahead. R, kids. All right, so as promised, we're gonna move on to microgreens and we're gonna use two different types of media for microgreens. The first one, go ahead, hold that up. This is coconut coir. So this is the ground up husk and it's really great because it's inert. So it's not really gonna have a big effect on the seeds themselves, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna hold on to a ton of water for us. So we're gonna soak that up and we're gonna get that ready to rock and roll. So Cam's mixing up the dirt, which is really not dirt, but Ew. coconut coir. Who doesn't like getting their hands dirty? That's gonna get nice 
and filled with water for our micros. A little pro tip when you're setting up your grow trays for microgreens, um, to start, you want your tray that the medium is gonna be in to have all these little perforations in the bottom. Now you can buy them this way. I didn't have them, so I just drilled them out. And there's a reason for that. All right, to start, you're gonna put your medium in the bed. You're gonna sprinkle your seeds on and you're gonna cover it with another tray to block the light. And that's gonna promote germination. When we're done though, we're gonna switch the order of these trays. And for a while, we're gonna be able to water from the top. But once these things grow very dense, we're gonna have to bottom water. So what we'll do is pour the water in the bottom and then it can kind of soak up through the root mass through those perforations. All right, so Cam is setting up our second growing medium. And these are gonna be these little hemp mats. Now I've not used these before, but she's lining the whole grow tray in these. And we're gonna see if we can catch our smaller seeds in these little mats. And we'll put some of our larger seeds in the uh, coconut core. So we are we are going to start some broccoli seeds in the hemp. So Cam is going to take our broccoli seeds and go ahead Cam just nice and evenly all over these two cells here. All right sprinkle them all over. Good job. Yep, on the floor too. Perfect. And that's what happens when you have five-year-old lab assistants. All right so after we get these uh, seed trays all seeded up we're going to be moving them over to this seedling heat mat, which is going to basically simulate when the ground temperature is adequate for seeds to germinate. Plants are incredibly smart, uh, and they're not just going to pop up if the growing conditions aren't suitable for them. So what we have here is a temperature probe that we're going to leave in the soil, and it's going to basically monitor and make sure we stay at about 68 degrees. And if it gets a little bit too cold, the heat mat will turn on and it'll make sure that, again, these seeds think that it's time to come up and out of the soil. All right, so we've finished up our seed trays. We're gonna go with red clover there in the back, followed by fenugreek, which is weird. It smells like maple syrup. We've got some alfalfa sprouts and broccoli up in the front closest to us. In this tray, we've got some daikon radish in the back, followed by some barley grass. And in the front two cells, we're gonna go with sunflower and peas, which we are currently soaking, and we'll get into those trays in just a little bit. Now, this one is basically done, so we are gonna cover it, leave it away from the light, and basically ignore it for about three or four days, and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. So I thought I'd give you a little fast forward. I know everybody likes instant gratification as to what we're gonna see out of these rock wools. I salvaged a few that we had planted a few weeks ago in class. Uh, these happen to be some of the world's hottest peppers that I got from a friend. Uh, and we can see that we've got these little seedlings. Now these first two leaves that plants make are called cotyledons, they're called seed leaves. And they're essentially gonna begin photosynthesis and provide all of the nutrients that these things need until they eventually make their true leaves. Now, interestingly, we had some kales and some basils that got started a little early, and you can see the difference here in the seed leaves, the cotyledons, versus the true leaves. And the, I say true leaves because if you've ever had kale, this is what its adult leaves are going to look like. Same deal over here with the basils. We've got some cotyledons, okay, but we also see the beginnings of their first true leaves. So it's really neat to sort of see at the very beginning, once germination takes place, what's going to happen. Now, one thing worth noting that, you know, we always kind of plan for failed germination and we put more than one seed in each rock wool. We are going to cull these and we're going to pick which plants look the healthiest so that we only leave one adult plant in each wool. All right, guys, so there you have it. A pretty successful day in the lab. We seeded our microgreen trays. We've got our traditional crops all seeded up and labeled. We've gone ahead and culled some of our seedlings. We saw the difference between true leaves and seed leaves. We took a look at our clones for the day, talked about soaking seeds to help loosen up the seed coat, and uh, special thanks to my lab assistant. Hi. All right, uh, she even brought in a couple of her own plants just to kind of keep us feeling good until they come up and out of the soil. Just in case anybody was worried, Wayne did make it out of West Hollow. A little bit more of a humble home these days, but he's still getting fed. Go ahead.
Snack away, little turtle, snack away.